basketball to talk about just a little. There's actually just a little know, bit of basketball to talk about. It was a, it was a quiet But it was night. a fun yeah. night of NBA playoff basketball, which will happen tonight. Big night of kale chips and high-protein yogurt dips at Nick's house, if anyone's going to join us. <laughs> Let us preview the it Thunder so Jazz <laughs> series. And we'll go outside together and get a Miles of Black and Miles. Do your thing, Jenna. Game Jenna's six child. in Utah. Thank you very much, Chris. <laughs> Game six in Utah. It's winner go home for the Thunder. They're going to keep looking to get their disappointing season up. Moving along. Westbrook and Paul George carried OKC to victory on Wednesday with a combined 77 points in a 25-point comeback. Chris, what did the Thunder have to do to complete the series comeback? Well, first, they have to let Russ be Russ. And, I mean, I think they would let him do it. But he has to just play his game. Don't worry about doing anything else. The two games they've won in this series, he's been a volume shooter. 25 shots, game one, 39. I don't want him necessarily right. taking 39. But he's going to be in that, in that he, range. Yeah, he yeah. has to be himself. I think he has to attack the basket, try to get Gobert in foul trouble. It's tough finishing with Gobert in there. If you can get him out of there, that will help him. And he can't fall in love with the three. Because he's not a good three-point shooter. No. He was hot. Mm -hmm. I think he was just desperate. He's hot right. in game uh, five. But that's not his forte. If it's going, great. But otherwise, man, attack the basket, stay in the mid-range. And I think they have to look at it like we got two stars. And that's George and Russ. The other guys, you, you, you play who's hot. Yes. You play what's going well. And that's what they did so last game. So there is game. no rotation so when Mello, we start. If Melo, if it's not working with him in there, then I'm sorry. I got to sit him down. Well, so Melo was only on the court for around 60 seconds during that enormous run. And it was the beginning of the run. For yep. the entirety of the last seven and a half minutes of the quarter, he's on the bench when they go on that run that saved their season. I said yesterday or day before, whenever it was, that I would consider starting Alex Abrinas in game six, your biggest game of the year. I got some pushback from people saying, the politics within the league, what that would do for Billy Donovan, if you do that to Carmelo Anthony at this point in the year. You, I didn't totally understand that criticism, but you are much more connected to the politics within the league. Like, is that a real thing that Billy Donovan's got to consider? How is this going to affect guys wanting to play here? Is, how is this going to affect relationships? Like, uh, To you, some extent, I mean, it's somewhat different because, me, look, Melo, anybody with eyes sees that Melo is not what he used to be. He's not I even mean, half not, of it. No, not even close. And that's not even a slight on him. He, he's in his 15th year. Dwayne Wade, Chris Bosh didn't even play it. Like, that, this is not unusual. What's unusual is LeBron, who he right. probably gets compared to. So, but, yeah, there is some reality to that. But I would not change the lineup. Okay. I would start him, but I'm, I'm not going to be hesitant to have a quick leash if I have to get him Why? out of there. That's, What's the difference? Why? I think at this Just point in the series, there's him? no need to change okay. the starting. Because you don't know that Alex Abrinas is going to be great. No, in a game seven? In a game seven? Yeah, game six. Yeah, game six. I mean, yeah, he, I mean go with what? Go with Melo. He, he, I think it's fine to start him. But if it's not working, you go with somebody else. And more importantly, you don't approach the game with the mentality that we have three stars. Because you don't. You approach the game with the mentality is you have one superstar and one awesome number two in Paul George. Like if George is cold, I'm still riding with him the whole night, mm -hmm. right? Because he might get hot. Same with Russ. Not so with Melo. And that's the difference. Uh, Melo has to have the type of attitude in a game like this is whatever I have to do. If it's being a ball handler, if it's playing defense, if it's rebounding, because that's the way they're going to be able to continue this streak, this, this winning streak and be able to get it back to OKC. But what becomes important, after a 25-point comeback, that first quarter becomes important. If you let Utah, if you let the fans, you let these young players regain their confidence, because it's been a, a, a tale kind of two different places. They did win the big game there in OKC, but they played tremendous at home. So I just believe those first 12 minutes, we can't forget what happened. We're not even supposed to be playing game six. But because of that big comeback, I just believe with younger players and that that noose begin to choke, that choke begin to, it is, if we get into the second half with younger players, oh, they'll start to feel, man, we're going back for game yeah, number seven. Yeah. Something that Russ, he knows personally about. So I believe that the start is very, very important for OKC. Getting back to Carmelo Anthony for just a second, I think there's a lot of concern earlier on that he would be 
he would be resistant to either coming out of the lineup or not starting or coming off the bench for whatever reason. How has he been with all? I mean, he has to know what his well, he was. Well, he been. was frustrated yesterday or in game five. You know, he got, mm -hmm. I don't know if, if argument is too strong, but he was, you know, he and Mo Cheeks, the assistant coach, were kind of going back and forth. Melo said he wanted to be out there, which is fine. But they were rolling without him. And, you know, he conceded. And wait, if you used the word well rolling. They had a 25-point comeback. He wasn't in no, the, was, in the quarter was, from almost all of and them. And look, so we, we talked yesterday about James Harden mm -hmm. in, what was it, 2015? Game six, the, I think it was 2014, the comeback. It might have been 15. Yeah, I think it was, it was like, yeah. uh, the comeback against the Clippers. They're yeah. down 3-1 in the series. Then in game six, they're down an enormous amount, 17 points in the fourth quarter. Harden starts the quarter on the bench like he always does. They go on a they run. Rally so they just basically leave him on the bench for the bulk of it. I, I so wanna that get, happens. But. I want to get back to something you alluded to. Which is, it feels to me like Rudy Gobert can be officiated almost any way. Like, because he's such a good shot contester, but he doesn't do it necessarily always with just clean blocks. He does it with the verticality rule. If you have a tight whistle, which is what happened to him in game five, you can get him out of the game, and then that is a different basketball team. Oh, yeah. They go from having the best rim protector in basketball to a... Nothing there. I don't want to say nothing. That's unfair. No, but they, but they, but you, you're removing you're attacking him. You're removing will, arguably, right? as great as Donovan Mitchell is, you're removing arguably their best player. So something to watch in this game, and if I were OKC, I would challenge him early, even if it means some empty possessions early. I think it would be worth being down six early if you get two fouls on him. Like, I would try to get him in foul trouble for the second consecutive. No game. question. And that's a great point because you got to go at him. And as you said, if you get down big, not even as big as they were in game five, no, but you just get down big, yeah, you're, yeah. Not, you're not coming back in Utah. But if you get up on them or, you know, those young kids, they haven't been through this. Who in Utah has really been through? At least last year they had a Joe Johnson. Right. Like, they're all young, uh, haven't really had a lot of playoff experience, so they got to come out and kind of punch them early. All right, Chris, thanks. We're going to see you a little bit later on in the show. Coming up, which draft quarterback is ready to make an immediate impact right now. That's next on First Things First. Some of them are probably sleeping. Maybe in a little bit. You got Milwaukee.